Welcome to Let the Quran Speak, Dr. Shabir. It's my pleasure to be on. Let's talk about Hagar. She's not mentioned very much in the Quran. Can you, can you, can you, can you discuss that? Why is <laughs> yeah. she mentioned at all? It, that's interesting that she's not mentioned much in the, in the Quran. Islamic tradition compensates for that mm -hmm. by mentioning her, her a lot. But let, let, let's stick with the Quran for the moment. Uh, so the, the, we only get uh, a suggestion in the Quran that she is there in the story by the fact that uh, in, in the 14th chapter of the Quran, it is mentioned that Abraham uh, settled his family in the barren region. And then he made the dua. He prayed to God saying, here is my situation. I've settled my family in this barren uh, region. Uh, so you provide uh, for them um, from your resources and uh, uh, cause the, the hearts of people to incline towards my family. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we know that Hagar is there, but uh, had it not been for the biblical story, we wouldn't know her name and uh, we, we wouldn't uh, know that she's actually <laughs> there. Um, of course, uh, reason tells you that Ishmael must have had a mother, but uh, uh, she's not the directly mentioned in, in, in the Quran. Mm -hmm. So then maybe it's wise to look at the biblical tradition to see what the Bible actually says about Hagar, and then we can talk about how the the, the Islamic tradition um, kind of fixes, changes that and fixes it a little bit to give their own interpretation of Hagar. Yeah, sure. Uh, so in, in, in the Bible, it is mentioned that uh, Abraham and, and Sarah, his wife, uh, journeyed to Egypt, and there uh, the, the Abraham was apprehensive that uh, the the Pharaoh um, may, may kill him to take his wife. So um, especially seeing, seeing that Sarah was especially beautiful. Uh, so uh, he said to her, OK, just uh, let's tell them that uh, you are my sister um, uh, and, and that thus I'll be spared. So um, Abraham, as a result, was treated very well by the Pharaoh. And uh, the Pharaoh took Sarah in and uh, wanted to have relations with her. But uh, something miraculous happened uh, preventing him from doing that. Um, but uh, a, a, as a result of all of this, uh, he gave gifts to both Abraham and Sarah. And, and a, a gift that was given to Sarah on this occasion was uh, a handmade Hagar. Mm -hmm. um, and now, eventually, Sarah wouldn't have children. And uh, I mean, from her own experience, she wasn't having children. And so uh, she wanted to have children. And uh, according to the customs of her day, uh, she thought it wise to give her handmaid to Abraham uh, to be a concubine for him so that uh, through her, Sarah would have children. Um, so uh, this happened, Hagar uh, became pregnant. But even, even before Hagar became pregnant, it is mentioned that uh, uh, Sarah w was not treating her very well. So um, in fact, so badly that uh, Hagar left. Um, she was a runaway slave, you might say. Okay. But uh, an angel visited her and told her that she should go back and, uh, to her mistress. And she went back. And eventually, uh, she got pregnant and uh, delivered uh, Ishmael. Is that when the, when the angel visited her, is that when the angel said, you're going to have a child? Yes. Okay. Yes. And didn't uh, put it in very flattering terms, but <laughs> did say that she's going to have a child. Yeah. Yes. And then she does get the child. Mm -hmm. And uh, then eventually Sarah herself became pregnant and uh, delivered uh, Isaac. Now, when Isaac was a couple of years old, um, and by this time, uh, Ishmael must have been about uh, 15 years old. Um, Sarah was um, uh, 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 surprised to see that uh, Ishmael is poking fun at her son. And uh, she didn't want this at all. She said, uh, you know, take this handmaid and her son uh, away from here. Her son will never inherit together with my son. So Abraham uh, received a similar, well, an instruction from God ratifying uh, Sarah's wish. And uh, Abraham then take, took his wife and the son and uh, left them in the uh, uh, wilderness of Paran, according to the Bible, giving them some meager supplies. Um, and uh, how Abraham expected them to uh, outlast the harsh environment uh, is not so very clear in, in the biblical uh, narrative. Nonetheless, uh, the uh, angel comes and, uh, and uh, points uh, Hagar to a well from which she was able to nourish herself and, and her child. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, and that's about, you know, the, the gist of the story 
as we have it in the Bible concerning Hagar. Mm -hmm. In fact, now both Hagar and her son Ishmael uh, become a, a, a sideline to the main narrative, which continues with Abraham and Sarah and Sarah and her descendants uh, leading to the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Hagar now in the Islamic tradition. How is her story a little bit changed uh, within the Islamic tradition? Yeah, so while she's not mentioned in the Quran by name or uh, even directly um, at all, uh, in, in the Hadith, uh, uh, Muslim tradition, uh, she gets ample mention. Mm -hmm. uh, so the story that is given in, in Hadith, which uh, probably was uh, to a large extent derived from uh, the uh, Jewish and Christian sources, uh, show that uh, when, when Abraham uh, was uh, taking his wife, and, and, and now in the Islamic tradition, she's a wife. Mm -hmm. It's not mentioned that she's a concubine. Okay. Uh, I mean, she, it, that's not that's not the. Uh, sometimes this is mentioned in some Muslim stories, but uh, but that's not what we find in the most uh, authentic uh, narrations of the of the hadith about this. So she's shown to be a wife, and so she has the full honor and dignity uh, of a free woman, and um, uh, she is. Uh, uh, shown to be cooperative with her husband, and her husband also is uh, acting on divine command. Uh, so when he takes his family to this uh, uh, barren desert, um, he's doing so by the command of God. And, and he knows that God must have some plan here for his family, uh, and God will take care of them. And she herself uh, asked Abraham, why are you leaving uh, us here? And uh, at first he didn't answer, but when she asked again, uh, she asked in a different way, are, 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 is this by God's command? And when he confirmed, she said that in that case, God will not leave us here to perish. So she so submitted herself. She to submitted command. herself. She had that faith. Uh, she, she was cooperative and she's not simply uh, a victim um, um, responding to somebody else's uh, dictates on her, but she is her self proactively engaged in, in the service of God and in the establishment of, of a community of believers. So it's interesting that she's barely mentioned at all in the Quran, but then her her depiction in the Islamic tradition is very positive. Exactly. And then uh, the Islamic tradition goes on to say that uh, she searched for water uh, for her baby and uh, she moved between the two mountains, Safa and Marwa. And uh, her movements to this day uh, are mimicked in, in the acts of pilgrimage. Um, among the rites of pilgrimage is that every man and woman performing the pilgrimage will uh, run between the, or walk briskly between the two hills of Safa and Marwa in Mecca. And, and everybody knows that this is in uh, commemoration of the actions of, uh, of Hajar, uh, of Hagar. Uh, who is known from the Bible uh, and, and so well uh, alive in, in Muslim tradition continuously through the performance of the Hajj. Thank you for sharing those thoughts, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at QuranSpeaks.com.